Hey there. So I'm down here in my uh, in my in my movie library tonight, and to uh, to talk to you guys. Basically, I wanted to met you guys have been like asking for more footage down in the in the movie library and to uh, to talk more and stuff like this. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to like go through some different things and kind of show you some films, uh, give you some personal experiences from my from me about about the films themselves. Now. <laughs> When I was growing up, I was lucky enough to like live, and lucky enough in a way to live in like a sm sometimes smaller areas. Now, if there was a theater nearby, so a lot of the, the theaters that I would go to, they couldn't always get like the the big film. They couldn't always get like the uh, the ETs or the Conans or stuff like that. So what they'd get, they'd get like uh, films like the the kung fu films or the karate films, the Italian Jello films, and f a lot of Argento. I remember going to see Deep Red in the theater. There's like posters there. I also remember going to see like like Canadian like you get a lot of Canucks exploitation stuff would show up. Uh, Humongous, uh, I think, was put out by Scorpion releasing on a uh, DVD and Blu-ray. I think it's on Blu-ray. Uh, but uh, I remember seeing that in the theater. And uh, there's a poster and they had like the blocks and the and the, like the twisted look kind of like guy in the and looks like a, kind of like a baby uh, crib type of thing. But uh, I, I have never got that movie. I'm hoping I keep looking around for it. I'm going to look for it again when I go up to. Uh, to Ottawa tomorrow. So, uh, and what I thought I'd do tonight, i just show you some of my stuff. We just look at some different stuff here and i give you some like, uh, some stories, maybe even some suggestions and uh, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. If you like this type of video, uh, please let me know. I'll, uh, and I will make more of these, like kind of like just basically movie centric uh, videos, like s just set based in my library. Now you see me on camera right now. Obviously I'm, I'm kind of bending down here because I'm using my, uh, my, tri my tripod here. But uh, what I'm going to do for a uh, a large portion of this video, you're not going to see me. Just kind of, I got the mic on, so you'll hear me talking, and I'll be showing you some films, and we'll uh, we'll be talking about them, and hopefully that can start like uh, a discussion. And uh, the killer thing is like, if you're a collector and you know this is like, I got, I, I have a, a, a nice few films. I I know that, mm. but there's uh, times when I look at certain ones and I see the ones that aren't there instead of seeing all the ones that are there. It's it's a collector's curse, I think. Uh, and I got to really like the the library and actually doing this and uh, and creating it has helped me uh, kind of come to to terms with okay you've got a lot of stuff here be uh, be glad with what you got type of thing but uh, for a while I was like you know man I I got this but I don't have this one and this one and so I had to really like to say okay I have a lot of films here that's going to take me a long time to watch uh, one of the the biggies that I uh, Got, I was very proud of, and actually got me choked up when I got it a bit. Was uh, was the Black Marie edition of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I'm a huge Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was actually one of the very first horror films that I saw. I've met Gunnar Hansen, and uh, it was a great, great honor to uh, to do so. He was a uh, a fantastic guy. Now, uh, this edition here, there's like three editions that came out around the same time. I really wanted to upgrade my uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I had the uh, the Dark Sky Steelbook. And you know the gold one, and I've always wanted to like have it on Blu-ray. So my better, ha I told my better half like you know, well, uh, it's kind of expensive, and you know, it, yeah, it's probably not worth it. I'll, I'll just get like uh, the cheap edition down the road. I'll get like the one goes on sale. I get made the four disc edition for a little bit, like if that one goes down a little bit cheaper. But uh, she surprised me. I had no idea that I was getting this at the time that it came. Like many of the things that she surprised me with when my demons, like uh, demons, demons two arrow steelbook came in the mail, had no idea that was coming. Uh, Basket case one, two, and three. When that came in the mail, uh, that still book, again, no, uh, no clue. So this is the uh, the set here itself, and uh, you just you open it up, and I'll just open it up here for you. You see, it has this. Uh, that's the bloody apron, and I'll just take out the I'll take it out like that. You can see the. Uh, this is the exclusive art. That's uh, pretty sure is exclusive to the set. Now I'll just look. There's like five discs here. Uh, there's the you know the four disc and there's the fifth disc the bonus disc with uh, Tobe Hooper and uh, and William Friedkin and like a uh, a discussion. There's also a little poster on in here as well. But uh, again, it's one that uh, I was lucky enough my better half knows how much I love this stuff. She you know she's never ever seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and honestly she doesn't want to because uh, it, it kind of freaks her out. And I wouldn't make her see it uh, unless she really really wants to. So let's look over at some of my. Uh, Jallo stuff. I'm a really big fan of Jallos, and we can talk a bit about those as well. Now, there's a company in the UK called Shameless Screen Entertainment. 
Uh, they do a lot of this, uh, the jello and like a kind of a Italian stuff. Uh, they put out a, a ton of different, uh, different things. I want to show you some of ones that I consider the best. Now, what's really cool is that for, hey kitty, collectability, there's the, there's the Shameless 20. Now what the Shameless 20 is, is the first 20 things they put out actually spells Shameless. Um, you can see it here. I got a lot of them, but I don't have all of them. It spells Shameless on the, on the spine. And I would really like to collect it. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the first one doesn't have a, doesn't have, <laughs> sorry, the cat's meowing, I see, distract me for a second. Uh, doesn't have, uh, is that a print? And that was, uh, New York Ripper. And I love New York Ripper. I got like two or three copies of the film, actually. But I would get it again, uh, just to have that, uh, I really want to have this, uh, this complete. <sighs> But I've never, uh, never been able to uh, get the complete ones. So right now, just to let you guys know, because they're all numbered, I've got three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. What's that one there? Uh, I got them in the wrong order here. Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And uh, number twenty is footprints on the moon. And. Uh, Baba Yaga, The Cat's Victims, which is better. I actually, I, I turned this one over because some of them have like dual covers. Uh, called It's called Watch Me When I Kill. It's actually a really good one. Uh, it's very tame compared to a lot of yellows. It's not overtly with a lot of like the, uh, the sexuality and stuff. And it's not as, as violent as some of them. But I, I did really like the story to this one. Like the, the, the way it went. Of course, there was also a strip nude for your killer. That's by Andrea Bianchi. Uh, a lot of people right now are familiar with Bianchi because uh, recently the movie Burial Ground came out on, uh, on Blu-ray. And uh, that is Andrea Bianchi. So he does this like, he knocks out of the park with his stuff, with, the, uh, with, uh, with his films, like whether it's a zombie film or a jail film. It's not usually like a ton of new deal. There's a lot of exploitation. At times it seems he's almost going a little over the top in like, it's almost seems like not really like big, it's almost a satire at times in some stuff that he does but i think he just really loves to go that far over the top and because he does i actually like him even more for that now i actually started filming this before i'm not gonna lie to you but i took out a couple of these these covers and some of them have nudity on them so so i'm not gonna get flagged for anything i, I had to redo this video this part this video right now start over again uh because uh, i didn't want to like have like a bunch of nudity on screen there because I have younger viewers that watch. Uh, Amsterdam, I, uh, I got to recommend that's got a really great chase scene in there as well. Don't Torture a Duckling is a really, really actually good Ful Fulci film. Um, Almost Human is a, little, is a fantastic film. That's more of like a, a Plesiata, I think that they're called. Uh, I always get that wrong. Uh, Strange Vices of Mrs. Ward, I will recommend Day and Night. That is a great film. Um, Sister Versala. That's the, that's the one of the sleazier ones, but with Giallo, you kind of expect to, like a lot of the, uh, the kind of like the sleazy stuff, but it's really fun. Uh, New York Ripper, of course, is number 29 here because he redid New York Ripper. And New York Ripper is like, if it's the pretty much, uh, there's some stuff in New York Ripper that's kind of like, uh, yeah, you just don't like show it to a kid type of thing, but it's a really cool Giallo film. I like the way that it's done, and it plays a bit with his, uh, with his obsession kind of with uh with donald duck which he uses he kind of uses like that the duck in uh don't, don't torture duckling too in a way uh just uh two really good films on very different different levels that don't torture duckling is more of like a i'd say more one of his more serious uh uh jellos uh new york ripper's still serious but it's more of a it is a get more of the slasher jello and kind of like the uh, the sleazier type that you'll see now one thing that uh, Shameless does really well is their packaging. This, uh, they put it like uh, NZOG Castellari's uh, Bronx Warriors Trilogy. And a lot of people picked these up uh, singly through, uh, I think it was Blue Underground put them out. But this is the, uh, the Shameless uh, edition of them. So you get this like tin and it's got this beautiful embossed skull, which is from the, uh, from the movie. It's sexy on the, on the motorcycle and the film. Um, it's got like the, uh, the three films on the inside, so you see these here. So you, each one of these gets their own like uh, gets their own disc, and of course the other you know the fan editions, number 21, 21.2 and twenty one point three I think they're called. Uh, so we got like uh, Bronx Warriors here and a uh, Escape from the Bronx and the New Barbarians, which stars uh, Fred Williamson. But it's again it's a really really cool edition. Um, as you guys see the the back there. 
they're all like kind of cool like what they call fan edits which usually means like the most complete edition that they can get of the films there's like uh if they're in anamorphic widescreen, there's new interviews with this. Got the director introducing all these films there. These things are shameless fact tracks, which have a lot of fun with those. Uh, there's a rebuilt edit of Escape from the Bronx, believed to be the most complete one ever. Uh, 20 shameless trailers. So you get there and you start watching it and you're like, oh man, there's so many more shameless movies I'm going to want to pick up. Uh, well, so what my better half did, I didn't have hardly any shameless at all. She decided that uh, for my birthday one year, what she was going to do was, was going to get me shameless. And uh, she got me like a bunch. So I got a lot of these at one point. And then I went to England and there uh, I was going to, uh, went into FOP there. And they had like a bunch of these on sale. It's around Halloween time. I wish I was there this year to, uh, to actually avail of that. Because they usually do. But like the shameless stuff. And for like for really, really good prices. Uh, and they have, there's so many, so much good stuff they put out. The House of Laughing Windows is a fantastic film. Uh, now they put it like more kind of like the uh, the sci-fi one, like uh, like the tenth victim, uh, which uh, starred God, I think it's Mastriani is in this one. So yeah, yeah, Marcelo Mastriani is in this one. Ursula Andress. It's got one of those cool like shooting boob covers, but it actually makes sense. There's actually my uh, my cousin like has this book. He's read the book and he had no idea that this was actually a, uh, that it was a movie. So we got kind of stoked. So uh, one of these days when he comes and visits, we're going to actually sit down. We're going to watch The Tenth Victim in the, between like, uh, you know, Marathoning Zelda and stuff like that. Uh, so those are um, a few of the, uh, of the shameless ones that I like. Now, one thing I can actually show you over here is uh, I'm a big, you know, as you saw, I did like the Vestron thing. So I'm a big Vestron fan i like a lot of these like low budget films so you see i've got like one two three four six seven and nine that's what i got so far with there but we've already talked about those a bit so i won't go into those too much uh now i do have only two mon macabras i've got the 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 fan which is a really really good movie uh, uh highly underrated it's a uh, much it was way different than i thought it was going to be and my better half doesn't normally like movies especially you know this type of movie but it's kind of like a it's just obsession and it's 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 a great ride it's a it's a great ride all the way through even like when you can see uh you can kind of see in some places where 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 it's kind of going but you're never quite you're not quite sure if it's how far there it's going to go and now it's going to end but uh it's a, it's just a really really good film a really great addition of this modern car but some some great stuff and uh there's, you know, it's, this is, by the way, it's, it's a great transfer of the film, too. It's a fantastic film. And, of course, you know, I'm a huge Fulci fan, so Lizard and a Woman's Skin uh, was one that I that I had to have. This is, you know, Alan Jones said, you know, Lucio Fulci's masterpiece. It's definitely a masterpiece by Lucio Fulci. Lizard and a Woman's Skin is a great Giallo film, one of, one of my very favorite uh, Giallo films that are that's out there. You know, this was right up there with Torso and that. I, I love this film. love the way that it's done. Every time I watch it, I, I just gain a little bit more respect and a little bit more uh, admiration for uh, the film and for uh, and for the director as well. Now, I've been lucky enough that I've been able to get a bunch of these uh, these like Arrow and like Screen Factory releases. So you can see like some of that over there. I'm not you can't see it that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just like uh, kind of mount this. You'll see in a second on my chair, <laughs> and uh, you're gonna have to see me again for a minute. But I was I've been able to get like a few of the of the limited editions there, and I've and some were were given to me by uh, by great people like uh, like James. Uh, I've had so many friends I've been able to like uh, that I've, I've I've reached out and uh, helped me uh, fill up places that I that I really things that are really needed. Uh, Stray Cat Rock was one that I had been wanting for a long time, and as soon as I got Stray Cat Rock and I started like watching that, I knew that uh, that Outlaw Gangster VIP was going to be one set that I was going to have to get. Like I definitely wanted the uh, the the Prisoners, the Scorpion one, but uh, I just had to have that one first for some. I just uh, I wasn't even a matter of cost at the time because uh, I could have like got the bigger set and it kind of like didn't get the uh, the other ones but it's just one that i really i wanted to uh i want to experience at that point i was watching like a lot of uh japanese films and uh and a lot in that uh in that style and i like that i love that that kind of like knife like yakuza sword that, that they use i i really i really like that uh, 
there's like a, a ton of these here. The like ones I can recommend, like recently, they had the air announcements. I talked to you guys about the fact that I was a little upset that uh, certain ones were announced because I thought that they'd do better <coughs> by buying the set itself. So it's not right here. It's over there farther. And I don't want to go moving it too much, the camera right now, but I'll see if I can show you guys. So uh, over here, I'm going to have to move it. <coughs> Over here is uh, the American Horse uh, Project. So, in the recent announcement on Arrow, they announced that these three films were being put out on their own. But let me show you the box set. Uh, so, uh, maybe you can decide whether you want to get one of these films or two of these films, or you just want to go out and get the box set and kind of support the American Horror Project itself. This is Volume 1. Uh, they did say they are still doing Volume 2, even though I got a little nervous when they started breaking them up and putting them out on their own. Now, they do that after a while with certain ones. They did it really fast with House and they're doing it uh, they're doing it like kind of faster than expected for the American Horror Project but I think this is uh, hopefully the, the we'll see uh, people like getting some of these and maybe getting interested in getting the sets themselves so here's the, I'm gonna like, let you guys see like the uh, the set. I, I love the cover here uh, here's the three films, Melissa's Carnival of Blood Oh, the kiddies are down here. No. Uh, the uh, witch who came from who came from the sea and premonition. As you can see it's got a vo like volume one there. Uh, now I'm going to see if you guys can hopefully see this this here. So like limited edition things. So basically, um, one of the things is like you get this here. Uh, that's really cool. Like mini kind of booklet book. I guess so. Uh, Seventy pages. We'll see if it's a book or not. So yeah, it runs at sixty pages. So it's still like. Kind of booklet or a book if you were uh, if you were uh, getting a book from something like uh <laughs> so sorry i got to distract my cats uh by scholastics but like hardcore scholastics so again this is like this is from which you came from the sea uh there's like lots of there's kind of write-ups in this here some great stuff um let's see who did the who did the write-ups on these here uh looks yeah, like stephen thrower kim newman kirla Jan janice really oh <laughs> Oh, no, uh, there's, a, there's a reason I got to say this. Oh, so I just finished about 10 minutes ago watching a movie called Cellulite Horror. And in it, it had this really cool, like this girl from, uh, and she's in Vancouver, and she's putting off the Cine, Cine Merte Film Festival. And it shows like the first three years, like kind of going into the fourth and the journey that, uh, <clears throat> that she makes along the way. Uh, <clears throat> like, uh, you know, there's a... Uh, they're set back, she loses money on one of the festivals, uh, relationships get uh, get hurt. So it was really cool, and she's this really cool girl, and she uh, is putting out these, uh, this amazing festival, and it really inspired me here, like, to think, like, I go to, like, these uh, conventions sometime, and uh, I think if I go to the convention that's in my area, it's kind of a science fiction convention next year, then I'm going to see if I can reach out to anybody that's, like, kind of into the stuff that I'm into and see if I can, like, really uh, broaden like my, uh, the people that I know when it comes to, uh, around here, when it comes to like collecting and collecting horror and, and the kind of stuff that I'm into. So anyway, she apparently, she did a, uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, because I'm sure this is a girl. She did a, uh, she did the, uh, the write-up on this. <clears throat> I would not have even like recognized the name at all, except that yeah, I'm a, I was a big fan of that uh, of that of that film, that documentary. It's called Cellulite Horror. Uh, so if uh, you ever want to check it, definitely check it out. It's a really really cool, really good documentary. Anyway, so there's uh, sorry, I got kind of distracted. That's really cool. That's actually another good reason to have this. There are some great uh, written articles. I I gotta get through this. I haven't read all this one. I got a few booklets that I gotta I gotta catch up and read. I gotta re kind of rewatch. I watched a couple of the films when I got them, but I haven't really do like dove into them like the the way they should be. Because uh, with something like this, it's uh with the horror project the way that it's done. I think that you really you want to look into it. You want to like watch the film, kind of experience it. Uh, and if it hits you on any level, then you want to look into the commentaries, look what it kind of features are in there, like read the uh, stuff on it. Uh, that that's me. I really kind of get into the uh, the films that I watch. So uh, there's like the uh, the premonitions right here. That's a, I thought it was a cool film, actually. <clears throat> the most, I guess, uh, kind of one of the most famous ones, the one that I really like, is the Witch Who Came From the Sea. Uh, it's not what you, what you think. There's a, it's a 
this is kind of a little blood like these are you know there's great covers here i love the way it's done uh, just really really good stuff uh, i'm really excited about this now i'm actually when i get back home during that my halloween month i'm probably gonna like uh be reviewing these films uh let me know if you're interested in that uh yeah i'm really uh, i'm really excited about that so kirla kirla jenny's i think her name is uh yeah Sorry, um, actually, that just kind of blows me away. I just actually literally finished Cellulite Horror, like, just before I started doing this video. Uh, but as you can see, there's, like, a lot of different, like, really good stuff that uh, that Arrow puts out there. Stuff like the, you know, the Battles Without Honor and Humanity. Uh, there's uh, the Six Gothic Tales. That's the stuff like that sell out. Uh, they put out a lot of, like, uh, box sets and stuff that uh, that end up selling out. So I'm, if you'd ever want to see me, like, go through all my Arrow stuff, like my Arrow Matter Academy, my Arrow video, uh, you know, my Arrow like film releases, and you know, just let me know. I've done like videos in the past, but I, I don't mind where I've seen. Like I've definitely watched a lot more of that stuff now than I, uh, and I did because you know I was amassing so much it took a while to watch some of it. Uh, but uh, like for certain ones, I'd seen them so many times that you know I didn't have to watch House by the Cemetery right away because I've seen House by the Cemetery so many times. But I've actually watched my uh, Arrow editions of uh, House by the Cemetery probably about like three or four times now. Since I got it. that was given to me uh, by uh, by Sammy actually by Falgar, who um, who gave me uh, who gave me that one. There's like so many uh, great additions when it comes to Arrow stuff. Now Arrow announced their uh, their Arrow Academy releases. Uh, I told you guys that they announced the Arrow video ones. Now I don't have like the thing down here. This is not a normal blog video, so I'm not really going to get into it that much. I'll just say that the Eric Romer set interests me very much. Uh, that's going to be one that I that's on like high on my list of wants to get because I don't have any Romer really I think I got one one Romer film in my collection and I really want to uh to change that to uh to get more now as you guys can see there's a lot of different stuff here that I don't and there's some stuff I show a lot some stuff I don't normally show uh, I gotta say this was a there's a hunger this is the one a Warner Archives. I mentioned Warner Archives in the last video. So this is the only Warner Archives uh, that I got. They're not easy to find around here. I got this one at HMV. Uh, when I was originally going to get it first, something like, it's a little high. It all has like a, it's got a commentary, but it's a cool commentary. It's got like Susan Sarandon and Tony Scott. I want to get read it. I haven't listened to it yet. I just read them and listen to it. Uh, and this is like a, a favorite film of mine. I'm a huge David Bowie fan. Um, so, but uh, we never find Warner Archives around here. This was the only one, and when it originally, it sought out before I uh, had a chance to get it. So I was kind of bummed, and then the, uh, we were the last, like in, in Newfoundland, was the last HMV to close down on, in the Atlantic, in Atlantic Canada. So everything that didn't sell in the other HMVs was all shipped to, uh, to the HMV in, uh, in, uh, in Newfoundland. And that's when uh, another copy of The Hunger came in. So uh, I grabbed it right away. I, I did not pass up on it again. Another one that I, that I picked up around that time was this one here uh, by Blue Underground. This is the only kind of this type of Blue Underground one I got. They're so cool. I love the covers. And these are like really ultra expensive, the Blue Underground ones like around, around here. A lot of these can run you like 30, 40 bucks each. Uh, this is Venom. It's a movie that I wanted for a long time. I, uh, I'm a big, I'm a big, big fan of uh, Susan George, but I like the, the cast itself. Just look at the... Uh, the cast that's uh, that's in this one here. We got Sterling Hayden, Klaus Kinski, Sarah Miles is in this. Of course, I said Susan George before, uh, Nicole Williamson, uh, and uh, Oliver Reed. So it's a great, great cast. Uh, two disc edition, just a great booklet comes with it as well. It's just really cool. And Venom looks like it's just all it's like killer snake type of film, but it's not. It's actually this kind of like a, it's kind of a thriller. Uh, not what you'd think, and. Uh, it's not something that I could have gotten like uh, just at, at regular price normally because it's ultra expensive and there's not a lot of features on it. But it's a great one that I really wanted for my collection. Uh, but it's got a commentary on here with the director. Uh, there's, a, of course, the booklet. Really, this commentary, some trailers. Uh, that's basically what it's got. But uh, And these are usually expensive. They put it like some now with these... Uh, like CDs and stuff with them, which, which I would really like to get some of. But uh, there's only so much you can afford, right? And uh, that's what I grabbed, like stuff like Torso and uh, New York Ripper, God Told Me To, Toolbox Murders, movies like that that are uh, all like, you know, big favorites of mine. I love New York Ripper. Like I told you guys, I had like a bunch of different copies of it. I got it on uh, DVD. I got it on Blu-ray. 
Uh, I'm a huge, uh, huge Fulci fan. So I got like, and you know, I'm a, I like Leonard, Larry Cohen. So God told me to was like one that I that I really had to have. Toolbox Murders is one that I uh, that I watched a long time ago. I totally forgotten uh, pretty much about it. And when I started, when I went and watched it again, I watched it uh, with my uh, with my oldest, and he uh, fell in love with it too. We both loved this film, and uh, we couldn't believe uh, how good this film was. We kind of. It's actually a really, really good film. Way, way better than I expected it to be. I, when you see a movie with the name Toolbox Murders, you know, you do have your expectations get lowered a bit. <laughs> but uh, it's just some really, really cool stuff. Now, again, like, there's some big films, like, uh, that just, uh, that are part of me. So, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to explain sometimes with certain movies, like, uh, what it is. They, they just, they, they resonate with me. And uh, With No Eye is one of those movies that it's not, it's definitely a, not a movie that's for everyone. Uh, I mentioned it before if, that the guys that made the t TV series, blah, 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 TV series Peep Show, were definitely With No Eye fans. Um, and uh, it captures a time and a place uh, in uh, someone's life that, uh, that I can, that can kind of relate to. Uh, I can relate to it probably more. Then I want to say I can relate to a uh, with no eye, but uh, it's it's just a, such a fun film. It's such a good, uh, it's such a good movie, and the uh, the performances are just so real. And what's really cool is that uh, you got the two leads in the film, and uh, one specifically, and he plays you know like he's completely like he's he's drunk. Like they're they're drunks. They're drunk all the time, except that. Uh, I find out which one. See if you can find out. We'll watch the movie without uh, without checking it out. One of them actually uh, doesn't drink. It's a he's, he's a teetotaler, like me. You know, I you know I have the social drink, but not a not a big drinker. College was a different story, but I was like, you know, everybody's type of college. Well, not everybody's college experience. One of my favorite movies of all time, and uh, I always watch this one. Usually around um, Halloween time, and sometimes just around Christmas time, because I just I really love the film. Uh, is uh, is pieces. This is the uh, the Grindhouse release. I didn't get the the puzzle. I was really disappointed that I didn't get the uh, the puzzle because I'm a uber fan of the movie pieces. I'm not like a little like this is a favorite of mine. This is uh, John, what's it Juan Picard Simone, right? Yeah, and this is it's it's such a fun film. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, the dialogue is it, it's got some quotable dialogue. It's got some really cool scenes. It's it's such a it's such a favorite. I could watch this one over and over again. Like there's two editions of the film here. There's the uh, U.S. unrated theatrical presentation, and there's the uncut, uncensored director's cut. So I watched both of those. I watched both in a row. Uh, I love the Four Sex Street documentary. Memories documentaries on here. It's really really good, guys. If you don't have pieces, just look how sexy this looks. It's really a cool. Uh, film. It's part slasher, part jello, all crazy, uh, but just just some great stuff. Uh, if you've never seen the movie Pieces, I do recommend it. Definitely check it out. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, have fun with it. Enjoy it. And uh, tell you what, for tonight, this is pretty much what we're gonna do. We're just gonna look right here. This is a a few films in uh, in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll uh, we'll definitely do this again, and we'll go through different parts of my library, talk about some different stuff. Uh, every time I add something new to my library, I come down here and uh, I put it together into the to where it goes. And I get this like I sit down and I my cat for a bit, and I just uh, I just like stay here and look around and uh, feel blessed in a lot of cases with uh, with a lot of this stuff. But uh, yeah, and it uh, it continues. The quest continues to uh, fill out the uh, the pin movie library to actually keep expanding this to uh, to keep making the uh, the library bigger and keep getting films uh, from all around the world and all different genres uh, and all different formats to uh, to really uh, just movies I fell in love with and uh, to show you guys the reason. I uh, I feel so passionate about what I do uh, when I get to come down here and uh, and look through these and it's just decide what I'm gonna watch for the night. It's uh 
it's a great experience, and it took a while to uh, to get this, to get where I'm at with this here, because uh, I'm not somebody that was like was uber rich and just could go out and bought everything. I uh, had some struggles uh, throughout my like everybody does throughout my uh, throughout my life, and I've had to start over with uh, films a couple of times, and I never ever got this close to uh, to having a library like uh, like this. So it's uh, it's getting there. Uh, hopefully, you know the journey continues and it's fun. <coughs> Continue <laughs> to do stuff like this as long as it's a lot of fun. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening for me right now. It really is time for tea. I'm probably gonna have some tea before I go to sleep. I'm very excited about uh, my trip tomorrow. So, wish me luck. Hope that I can find <clears throat> some good stuff and keep my budget. And uh, we'll talk again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me in the movie library. We're going to do more videos like this if you want them. So let me know. <clears throat> the easiest way, honestly, guys, for you to uh, say, okay, I want to see more of this, is uh, in the comment section down below. Let me know this that that's the type of video you want to see. If you want to see me coming down here, looking through stuff, telling you, like uh, showing you some different things from my collection, talking about some different things, like pulling some stuff out, uh, maybe some rare stuff, maybe some collector's editions, and uh, and just talking, well, you know, kind of what it means to me, and uh, you know why I think you should or shouldn't have it. Uh, then yeah, definitely that's uh, something that, that that I would enjoy doing, and. Uh, Anytime that uh, you guys enjoy it as well, that's uh, even better for me. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, my kitties are getting restless, so for me right now, it's time for tea. Have a great day, and uh, enjoy your week, guys. I'll see you soon.